everybody. I wanted to spend some time today talking about one of my favorite techniques, which is the use of custom icons in a dynamic way in your Power BI visuals. And the reason this came up was a recent forum question from a member named Mike Yang. And Mike is an experienced Power BI user, and he was going crazy trying to figure out how to add these custom icons into his card visuals. And you know, he said, I have a very simple question. Um, and it turns out it's not really a simple question at all. Um, that there are both limitations in card visuals themselves, as well as some techniques for managing custom icons that are not immediately intuitive. So I wanted to spend some time today going through each of those issues and show you two different ways that you can use to incorporate millions of different custom icons in a dynamic way into your Power BI reports. So let's let's take a look. So this is this is the the outcome that Mike wanted was just a um, a simple card, black card with text, and then an up arrow if the value of the measure was positive and the a red down arrow if the value was negative. And so what I've done here is basically replicated that in in a stylized way. And so um, if we click here to a different part of the ticker, you'll see that it dynamically changes to a, a green up arrow when it's positive and then a, a red down arrow when it's negative. And so the first way I want to show for how to incorporate this is using um, base64 conversion. And what base64 does is it takes binary um, files and converts them into ASCII text. That there's, there's no direct way to incorporate binary image files into a Power BI report. And so you've got to go through this encoding through base64 in order to do that first. And I'll show you the way, kind of the general structure that I use for this, which is just a basic switch true construct. So in this case, the, the measure that we're looking at is this average of um, log normal returns. If it's less than zero, it gets a certain value. If it's greater than zero, it gets a different value. And in this case, just for simplicity's sake, I've said if it if it's neither of those, so in this case, if it's equal to zero, it just gets a blank. And the, the chances of this averaging to exactly zero are very small. But you could, um, in this case, put a third um, value in here, which is just maybe a, a horizontal arrow that shows no change. Or you could use blank. But I've just done this to, to simplify the measure for illustrative purposes. So let's take a look first at custom icons. And the custom icons that I use is from a site called Flat Icon. And I have no affiliation with Flat Icon. I just happen to think it's a really good site. Um, it contains, I think, about 6.3 million uh, custom icons. And it lets you organize them in a really nice way. It lets you edit them. Um, I use these a lot in my... Power BI reports and you know, my challenge entries. Um, and so what I did was just found a an icon um, here that I thought would, would work well per Mike's requirement, and then just went through the um, the flat icon editor and created a, a green version for up and a red version for down. And so then downloaded those. And one of the things that um, I'll mention in this is when you when you go in to the flat icon editor, and if we change, you know, if we were to change this to, you know, to, to green and then download it, what you um, what you want to do in general is download the smallest version that works within your report. And so, in this case, when we're talking about binary sixty four conversion, um, a five twelve pixel icon is going to generate a, a very large base 64 conversion and so in this case for the the visual that we're looking at we just need like a 32 pixel icon and that's going to generate a much smaller um, ascii conversion so 
In this case, what I did was I downloaded the 32 pixel version of the, the red and the green um, arrows. And so what we can do is take a look here. And I've got the, the green arrow and the red arrow. And what we want to do is convert those into base 64. So there's a whole bunch of base 64 converters. Um, one that I happen to like in particular is this one, base64-image.de. And the reason I like this is because it's got a nice drag and drop interface, but also it has this image optimization. And if you enable this, what it will do is it'll reduce the size of your resulting file without any noticeable impact in most cases to the um, to the look of the visual. And so particularly if we're working with more complex images, um, that optimization will really help reduce the the size. So what we want to do here, is just take these two these two files drag and drop and you can see they convert quite quickly and then we can just take and copy the the image for each each one and if we go back to our our measure here so we, we want to look first for the um, the base 64 code for if the, the measure is less than zero, and that's gonna be the red down arrow. And so if we go back, let's take the red down arrow, copy the image, back to Power BI, and then inside the quotes, let's paste that in. And you can see that even for, for that small um, 32 pixel icon, this is a pretty pretty hefty amount of text. And so you can see we're for a photo or something that would really, um, really blow up quickly. So then what we want to do is just go down here and go back to the base 64 converter and take the green image and back to Power BI and paste that in. And that should give us this icon basic structure. And we can, let's create a new measure where we can copy that in. Let's take this whole this whole measure and copy it and then create a new measure to put that into and we'll call this um, icon icon 2 base 64. And now one thing we've got to do is data carry data category says uncategorized. We need to change that to image URL. And then we should be in good shape for creating the visual that we want. So what we want to do here is, as I mentioned, the card visual is not going to work. The card visuals do not handle images without the use of um, custom visuals for for reading those images but tables handle images quite well and so what we want to do is just first create a table visual and we can format that that table visual to look like a card visual and so what we want to do is let's take our icon 2 base 64 file and you can see that that drops in quite nicely. And then our measure, the average of the log normal return. And now what we can do is just format these using the, the new format pane. Let's 
specific column. We can set our background to black, our alignment to center, and do the same for the LN return. Um, so text, we'll set that to a gray color, background to a black, alignment to center, and now we can also change the, the font values. And let's change this to Arial Black. And let's try like a 30 point. And that's looking pretty good. And we can we can play around with you know with the look of that with the size of it. And then what we can do here is in the um, in the header we can take and just take that text drop it down to the minimum font size and then change the text to the background color and so now what we've got is we've got that card visual that um, that is showing the the icon and the the value and if we click here we'll see that it changes to that to that dynamic green up arrow. So that's that's had to do with base 64. Now the other the other possibility is using um, web-based images. And the reason you might want to do this is, as I said, in the um, in the event that you're using more complex images um, that may overrun the particularly if you're working in Power Query with a lot of different images, that the limit in Power Query for number of characters in a cell is um, 32,766. I have no idea where that number comes from, but um, that is the limit that Power Query can take within a, a given cell in terms of number of characters. And so if you're looking at a complex image or even a quite a complex icon at a at a fairly large pixel size you'll overrun that um, that limitation and so in that case there's some things you can do in terms of splitting the um, splitting the image into pieces and then reassembling it in DAX um, but the easier way to do it is just through um, web-based images and what you can do with those is once you once you download the the files, so the green up arrow and the red down arrow that we looked at, um, you can go to an image hosting site. And the one that I use is one called um, Image BB. There are a whole bunch of different ones. Um, this again, I have no affiliation with this site. It's just one that I happen to like. It works well for me. It's got a lot of nice. Um, configuration features. Basically what you do is just upload your your images to this site and then what you can do is you go to embed codes and make sure you're looking at direct links. There, there are some called viewer links and then direct links but what you want is is the direct links and you can then copy those and then using the the same basic structure that we did in the switch statement, you can paste those into that basic structure. So there's the red down arrow. And if we go back to image BB, we can find the, uh, the link for the green up arrow. And there's that direct link again. Copy that. And we'll pop that into the measure. And so again, we've just got to make sure that those are tagged as image URLs. 
Um, and that should give us exactly what we need from a, an image standpoint. So what we can do is let's take that let's take that visual that we created before. Let's take out the base 64 and sub in the um, image BB icon. And again, what we've got to do is just go in and throw the the background color. Um, so specific column. background black and we've got the same thing as if we had the um, as if we had the embedded base 64 icon now one thing I'll show you with regard to the it's not, it doesn't look bad here with the the web image file but one thing with the base 64 if we if we go in and Actually, I think this one uses base. Yeah, this one uses base 64. So one of the problems with this is when you mouse over it, you get that, which is the full base 64 code. And one of the things I do to clean this up is either you can turn the tooltip off, or what you can do is just throw a transparent shape or transparent button over the top of this so that you're not getting the the base 64 code when you mouse over it. So that's the um, that's the technique. You can use that, as I say, to pull custom icons in millions of different custom icons um, in a lot of different ways. Um, so tables handle this well. Um, you can do this through matrices, and then there are some custom visuals that um, will view these just in isolation within a frame. So a lot of flexibility in this technique. Um, hope you found that helpful, and. We'll see you in the next video as always. Thanks a lot for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.